what was the second one? What we did was to calculate the total probability of a certain event B that consisted of, was made up from different possibilities which corresponded to different scenarios. So we wanted to calculate the probability of this event B that consisted of those two elements. Let's generalize. So we have our big model and the sample space is partitioned in a number of sets. In our radar example, we had the partition in two sets. Either a plane is there or a plane is not there. Since we're trying to generalize, now I'm going to give you a picture for the case of three possibilities or three possible scenarios. So the, whatever happens in the world, there are three possible scenarios, A1, A2, A3. So think of these as there's nothing in the air, there's an airplane in the air, or there's a flock of geese f flying in the air. So there's three possible scenarios. And then there's a certain event B of interest, such as a radar records something or doesn't record something. We specify this model by giving probabilities for the AIs, that's the probability of the different scenarios. And somebody also gives us the probabilities that this event B is going to occur, given that the ith scenario has occurred. Think of the AIs as scenarios. Okay. And we want to calculate the overall probability of the event B. What's happening in this example, perhaps instead of this picture, is easier to visualize if I go back to the picture I was using before. We have three possible scenarios, A1, A2, A3. And under each scenario, B may happen or B may not happen. And so on. So here we have A2 intersection B. And here we have A3 intersection B. In, our pre in the previous slide, we found how to calculate the probability of any event of this kind, which is done by multiplying probabilities here and prob conditional probabilities there. Now we are asked to calculate the total probability of the event B. The event B can happen in three possible ways. It can happen here, it can happen there, and it can happen here. So this is our event B. It consists of three elements. To calculate the total probability of our event B, all we need to do is to add these three probabilities. So B is an event that consists of these three elements. There are three ways that B can happen. Either B happens together with A1, or B happens together with A2, or B happens together with A3. So we need to add the probabilities of these three contingencies. For each one of those contingencies, we can calculate its probability by using the multiplication rule. So the probability of A1 and B happening is this. It's the probability of A1 and then B happening given that A1 happens. The probability of this contingency is found by taking the probability that A2 happens times the conditional probability of A2 given that B happened, and similarly for the third one. So this is the general rule that we have here. The rule is written for the case of three scenarios, but obviously it has a generalization for the case of four or five or more scenarios. It gives you a way of breaking up the calculation of an event that can happen in multiple ways by considering individual probabilities for the different ways that the event can happen. Uh, that's okay. So, yes? No, this is true whether your sample space is infinite or finite. Uh, what Matt, I'm using in this argument that we have a partition into just three scenarios, uh, three events. So it's a partition to a finite number of events. It's also true if it's a, part a partition into an infinite sequence of events. But 
that's, I think, one of the theoretical problems at the end of the chapter. Uh, you probably may not need it for now. Okay, so this, going back to the story here. There are three possible scenarios about what can happen in the world that are captured here. Event, under each scenario, event B may or may not happen. And so these probabilities tell us the likelihoods of the different scenarios. These conditional probabilities tell us how likely is it for B to happen under one scenario or the other scenario or the other scenario. The overall probability of B is found by taking some combination of the probabilities of B in the different possible worlds, in the different possible scenarios. Under some scenario, B may be very likely. Under another scenario, it may be very unlikely. We take all these into account and weigh them according to the likelihood of the scenarios. Now notice that since A1, A2, and A3 form a partition, the, these three probabilities have what property? Add to what? They add to one, right? So it's the probability of this branch plus this branch plus this branch. So what we have here is a weighted average of the probabilities of the Bs in the different worlds or in the different scenarios. Special case, suppose the three scenarios are equally likely. So P of A1 equals one third equals to P of A2, P of A3. What are we saying here? In that case of equally likely scenarios, the probability of B is the average of the probabilities of B in the three different worlds or in the three different scenarios. 